challenged and hopefully been able to help them a bit or done my best uh, and that sort of thing. And that's what I think should be required of all of us. So I would like to think that McClure is a public servant. All right, there we are. But it's up to you because you are the public. Uh, do you like David Attenborough, Scotty? I was watching his latest series on Netflix last night. I ad don't just like David Attenborough. I adore him. And I adore him for what he's done in his life. And I adore him because he's also a lovely guy, a super guy. And I loved his brother, Dickie, Richard Attenborough, the actor, who was uh, founded Capital Radio and was the first chairman of Capital Radio. And there's a lovely story that when Capital Radio was being set up, uh, because it was a bit delayed getting everything off the ground and there was huge money involved, and um, the bank manager was getting anxious. So he called Richard Attenborough in. And, I mean, Richard Attenborough was like the director of Gandhi and things like that. And he called uh, Richard Attenborough in and he said, look, getting a bit worried here. I don't think I can give you any more money at the moment because you're obviously not on air and making the progress that you should be making. And it's a bit of a risk. And we don't have any collateral. We don't have any security um, in place, you know. So Richard Antler said, leave this with me. And he went to his house and collected a rather valuable painting that he owned. And he took it round to the bank, to the bank manager. And he said, would this uh, be sufficient security for you? And the bank manager took a look at it and apparently broke into a smile and said, the money's there, hang on to your painting. <laughs> and that was it. And uh, so David, of course. Now, David could probably have been the director general of the BBC, but he didn't want that. He wanted to spend time with his animals. David Attenborough, when I was young, was the first controller of BBC2 television. Yes. So he's a, a top media guy, but, uh, but he wanted to spend time with his animals. And who can forget, try and find it, David Attenborough lying in the jungle with a huge silverback gorilla with its arm around him. You know? And he starts, he goes, I'm talking quietly because I don't want to upset him that sort of thing so you'll see it you're bound to see this on youtube but in david attenborough silverback gorilla wonderful wonderful and these were moments that for a young guy when i was young it was just so exciting to even see these things and the creatures that he found flying green tree frogs and things that had evolved and now of course he's imparting huge huge wisdom and we should really really listen to him about the future of the planet. But I love when he does sort of commentaries, a kind of example would be, um, nothing is stirring in the frozen wasteland of the Arctic. Across the white tundra, suddenly there is a small movement. It's the one occupant, the Arctic fox. Stuff like that, when he does these sort of things, I love it. I get goosebumps, like, Whoa! you know, so there you are. So I don't know if that answers your question. Do I like David Attenborough? But there you are. Also loved the Barras and the Brigitte. Absolutely, Eddie Doyle. Great Glasgow traditions. You'll get it at the Barras. And which one of us has not been excited going to the Barras and the Brigitte? Another wonderful institution down in the East End there is um, the Forge Market. I opened the Forge Market 25 years ago, about, I think about a fortnight ago. Fantastic stuff. So there we are. Wonderful. Um, Scotty, where's this year gone? It's gone ever so quick. Well, of course, Glenn, we were in lockdown for almost six months, weren't we? Five months of lockdown.
I think it's amazing that David Attenborough is still doing these programs at top level at his age. What is he? Is he 90, 94 or something like that? Make sure to clip the David Attenborough. So there we are. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll just do it now. Uh, so 